story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Geft Ogete. In our major story, Senate unanimously turns down recommendation for removal of fuel subsidy. Also in this program, protesting pensioners black men gate to the National Assembly complex. Members of Bring Back Our Girls movement defy security forces to continue their daily sit-out protest in Abuja. And outside Nigeria, United States Secretary of State John Kerry warns Israel and Palestinians face dangerous movement, a moment as violence escalates in Gaza. African Development Bank establishes resource hub to support federal government. I'm Dume Gary Led, executive board of the Nigerian Football Federation, says all allegations leveled against it are false. It's good to have you join us again. We do apologize for that little hitch. Now, details of the news and other stories. The Senate has unanimously turned down a recommendation for the removal of fuel subsidy. This was one of the recommendations by the Senate Committee on Finance, which investigated the alleged unremitted 49.8 billion US dollars oil fund. After extensive debate on the report, the Senate adopted 21 out of 22 recommendations. The only one turned down centered around was what made centered around was that made by the committee on the need for oil subsidy removal in the country as a way of stamping out corrupt practices in the sector. But the Senate rejected it on the grounds that it was not in line with the position of the Nigerian masses. Senate President David Mark maintained that it would be wrong for senators to pitch themselves against public opinion. Pensioners have blocked the main gate to the National Assembly complex in Abuja. They are seeking a 33% upward review of their pension in line with an agreement they claim they have with the authorities. The senior citizens had planned to march on the complex to seek lawmakers' intervention, but security personnel denied them access and they decided to block the gate of the legislative complex for several hours. They came from far and wide. Armed with placards conveying their plight, they sought to voice their frustrations to federal lawmakers. But security personnel stopped them at the gate. Not to be deterred, the senior citizens blocked the main entrance to the legislative complex. Olonu Tola Tale is one of the protesting senior citizens. So we are here for our 53.4%. If we are, They have promised us since that they will implement it. But We've not seen anything. So when some of our members, when they called me yesterday, so I just have to leave whatever I'm doing 
Ancom. The pensioners insisted they were at the complex on invitation to draw attention to several unfulfilled promises. Because we have series of problems, uh, accumulated pensions that had not been paid, non-implementation of pension increases and uh, harmonization and what have you. So we have written in details all that we, 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 uh, the government owes us. So the issue now is that we are going to listen. The pensioners' grievances include non-payment of 5% counterpart funds to local government pension boards across the country. They insist this will ensure prompt payment of retirement benefits approved for local government pensioners and retired primary school teachers. The Bring Back Our Goals movement has accused the state security service of setting the stage for a crackdown on its members. It said in a statement jointly signed by OBS Kwesili and Hadiza Bala Usman that allegations made against the group were part of a series of threats targeted at its members. The movement argued that contrary to the claims, its activities including meetings are held in a public space at the Unity Fountain. While noting that there is no compulsion in membership, the leaders insist that it is a self-funded group motivated by empathy and the need to search and rescue the abducted Chibok girls. The Bring Back Our Girls leaders ordered that they cannot be intimidated to stop exercising their civic rights. Members of the Bring Back Our Girls movement has continued its daily sit-out protest in Abuja in defiance of security forces. The converged on the okay, unity so fountain like in spite the, of what many of them described. This franchise, all of a sudden, it, has, it mean, makes a lot of meaning to her. So everything is a franchise. Boko Haram is a franchise. And she never explained how Boko Haram is a franchise. So we don't know what her definition of a franchise is. And then she says, bring back our girls is a franchise. We don't know what her definition of a franchise is. As far as we are concerned, we are not a franchise. We are concerned Nigerians who are insisting that government should do what it is supposed to do since it has the responsibility of securing and protecting the lives of Nigerians. We don't have sponsors. We are sponsored by ourselves. Everyone who comes here is a sponsor because we've, everyone has come here out of his own conviction. If she knows who the sponsors are, she should name them. After all, she was, she's the security person. She's supposed to have the details. She should have said uh, X and Y, Z are the sponsors of BBOG. She just made a vague, meaningless statement. I'm here because I'm a human being. I'm here because I'm passionate about humanity. I'm here because I'm a father. I'm here also because we need to pressurize our government to be responsible and responsive. Section 14 of the Constitution is very, very clear. It said the primary occupation of government shall be the security and the welfare of the people. And that was what President Jonathan swore to on May 29, 2011. So we, I do expect that government, for the fact that they took government 19 days after the abduction to even respond officially to the abduction of these girls, agitated the formation of a movement like this. Two of my cousins are involved and uh, three are my nieces. Apart from other extended relations, uh, are involved in this kidnap. It's true that the government have been accusing this group to be of a business group or political party. All what kind of names they have been calling this group. But this group is, is resolute enough to ignore the accusations from the government and other quarters. That's why uh, uh, up to 72 days now the group is still sitting because we ignore their accusation. The Corporate Affairs Commission. So, so please... I want us to be the State Security Service has paraded members of a gang that kidnapped President Goodluck Jonathan's uncle. The agency says a 400-level undergraduate, Eldred Jonah, is the leader of the gang that also included a native doctor. But the alleged gang leader claimed he only carried out surveillance and provided funds for the operation. The report. Go forward. Go forward to them. These are the men arrested over the abduction of the president's uncle in February last year. The man was released after 17 days in captivity after a number of arrests were made. Security forces say the abduction was executed by these undergraduates of the University of Jos. Eldred Magnus Jonah. Jonah masterminded the kidnap of Chief Inengite and provided the takeoff grounds 
of 40,000 Naira for arms procurement and other logistics, he confessed to the following, that he carried out surveillance on the victim, that his, his, the gang had two teams for the operation, the land team made up of five persons, and the water side, that is the speedboat team, made up of three persons as an undergraduate. The 30 year old undergraduate denied that he was the brain behind the crime, but admitted funding the operation. One, one, A native doctor also explained his involvement in the abduction of President Jonathan's uncle. What can you do? What service did they ask for? What did they say you should do for them? They were going to the king. So that is in the, because it was night when they came to my place. I, I did not know them. Only this uh, forever I knew. Because it was my session. So the wrong color. A major player in the abduction is one Sebastian, whose name was mentioned by the suspect. When asked about his whereabouts, the SSS spokesperson simply said, investigations are still on. She, however, said the men will soon be taken to court. In a related development, the SSS has cracked a kidnapped syndicate, which was behind the recent abduction of two young women in Abuja. Marilyn Oga revealed that the gang led by an ex-convict picked up a ransom of 10 million from its last operation. Stand there, please. Ah, stand. Face this side. Carry up your face, so. Move forward. Move forward. Don't come here. Just move forward, Joe. Carry your face, Uh, oh yeah, Mary Asagba. No. Huh. He's called Paul or Sky. From the confessions of the suspects, the following findings were arrived at. That Paul is the leader of the criminal gang that specializes in kidnapping, car snatching, and armed robbery that Paul planned and coordinated the kidnap operation with members of his gang, that Diko, who works as a guard at the residence of the victims, invited the gang that kidnapped the sisters, that Diko provided the gang information on the movement of the victims' family, that the gang was paid 10 million naira ransom before the sisters were released, and that Paul lied to other members of the gang that only six billion naira was paid. How do you get your weapons? We exchange them for a couple of cars. We exchange them for a couple of cars. Cars. In Kaduna. There's a car dealer. There's a car dealer in Kaduna. So we sign in Kaduna. Explain the exchanging. We gave him um, some cars and he gave us the weapons. How do you get the cars? We snatched them. So other matters now where the APC is in crucial talks. As a result of poor performance by the All Progressives Congress in the just-concluded Ekiti governorship election and allegations of rigging labelled on the People's Democratic Party, the leadership of the All Progressives Congress are engaged in a soul-searching exercise to steam the tide of the PDP winning sphere and ensure victory in the August 9 election in Oshun State. Rashid Rashid was there. He felt in this report. The meeting, which is said to be another step by the All Progressives Congress leadership in appraising the state of affairs in the party and to position it well for the future challenges in the country. 
Though most of the participants declined to disclose the details of the meeting, the Deputy Vice Chairman South and former Governor Shegun says the August 9 election will be a different ball game. We are going to do everything to ensure that we get an election that will be credible, that will be free and fair, and nobody should take us for granted this time around. We have seen what happened in Ekiti. We are going to prevent that. That's already an impact. Going further, Oni says it is clear that the Ekiti election was rigged, but the All Progressive Congress is ready to challenge the election in court, stressing that Fayemi has decided also to go to court. He has always been in tandem with the party leadership. There has never been any shade of disagreement. The governor said, if this is indeed the will of the people, he did not say that whether it is the will of the people or not. And we have discovered that that is not the will of the people. Therefore, you should expect that naturally and normally we will go to court to defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to ensure that it will be absolutely done in the best of uh, professional ethics. Senator Chris Ngige and Shegwoni say the August 9th governorship election in Oshun will be a shift from the AKT experience. Oshun is a different ball game, and I know you know it. Oshun is our territory. It's an AP, AP, APC uh, stronghold, and um, the people are APC through and through. Let us be very, very factual. Let us be very, very clear. What we have seen in Ekiti is, uh, is a new dimension to voting. It's a new dimension to election rigging. And I can tell you, we have seen it, we have studied it, and we can say for sure that nobody will fool Nigerian voters again. As the APC continue its soul session, occasioned by its defeat in Ekiti. The days leading to the Oshun State Governorship election appear set to bring more drama. Rashid Rashid, Core TV News, Oshobo. Meanwhile, the national leadership of the People's Democratic Party says it is aware why the opposition political party, the All Progressives Congress, is angry. The anger of the APC, according to the PDP, was as a result of Voting the feats suffered during the just concluded the city at, Duikiti at about 12:30 p.m. During the August 9 governorship election in Oshun State, in a statement issued by its national publicity secretary Olisa Metu in Abuja, Metu was reacting to a statement issued by the APC, in which it accused President Goodluck Jonathan of impunity and failure. The opposition party accused the president of having hands in the crisis work in states like Adamawa, Edo, and others, where the governors there are currently having running battles with the members of the state houses of, houses of assembly. Metu added that no doubt the APC is afraid and bitter that its prematurely celebrated electoral fortunes and vaunted popularity to win the 2015 elections are gradually being smashed to its face as mere illusion. You're watching Core TV News at 9.45, Core TV Primetime News. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll take you to Oshun. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 koba per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG, everyday quality brand.
Call TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 at 24 hour news station you can now watch call tv news live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com click on live tv on our website and watch us live when welcome to call tv primetime news to follow us on twitter click on twitter icon on our website and facebook click on the facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Moremi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Welcome back. It's Core TV Primetime News. The Labour Party candidate for the August 9 governorship election in Oshun State, Fatai Akimbade, has visited the Christian Association of Nigeria and Muslim clerics in Ejibu local government area in his efforts to converse for support. Frank Omalape was there. He filed in this report. The meeting venue was a local church in the area with the governorship candidate of the Labour Party unveiling his plans to his people in the local dialect. He also met with Muslim clerics in what is obviously a new dimension and the battle to take the government house in Oshobo. One has been tested, one has been, and people are ready to follow me because they know my existence and they know what I can do. They know what I've been doing. They know the way I've been handling, and that they know the way I'm relating to people. So uh, it, is, it is not just that, uh, People are already expecting me. They asked me to, 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 to just leave PDP for any party that will give me the ticket. And that is what you have seen. You will see the election, the way it will go. Media director to Fataya Akibadi's campaign organization says the campaign is a void of large crowds because it is designed to help the Labour Party in reaching the people who will decide the election. What we're trying to do is to reach the people at the grassroots, people who really have the votes, people, the man on the streets who would not have the opportunity of listening to you while you're on the road trip, but people who at the end of the day will, will be the decider and these are the people we are, we are meeting one on one. Responding to issues raised by the audience such as the school measure, Fatai Akibadi says the party will reverse the wrong policies of the present administration if elected. Each community has its own tradition, especially when it comes to educational uh, institutions. The community built so many of these uh, institutions and they will not want to see their words, children living too far or going too far from their schools. It's, it's, a, it's not a good system. I mean, the, the new system is unusual. And I think that we have to give it to the governor who introduced it because he has been telling us that uh, he's going to run an unusual government. So, war is not surprised. But if we get there, definitely there's going to be, uh, we are going to change the system. The Labour Party remains optimistic it will win the August 9 governorship election in the state. But the days leading to election day promise more developments as the candidates just to for the people's attention. 
Frank Omalape, Call TV News, Oshobo. The Oshun State Government has unveiled a micro-credit agency to serve the 65% of its population, which it says are artisans and may not have the ability to secure bank loans for their businesses. The unveiling ceremony took place in the state capital, Oshobo, from where Rashid Rashid filed in this report. Oshun State Governor Rauf Aregbeshila, while unveiling the Oshun Microcredit Agency in a carnival-like atmosphere, says it's a fulfillment of his commitment to the upliftment of the life of Oshun people. A statement buttressed by the Commissioner for Commerce and Cooperative, Ismaila Alagbada. We will open an advance with the microcredit agency, then they will give them form the particulars of, of their various organizations, cooperative society will be declared the nature of their business will be declared, then the amount of facilities that they are looking for will be clearly stated. The first tranche of the microcredit loan, which came in form of vehicles for various transport unions, was lauded by the unions who say that it will help in reducing poverty due to the ease of the repayment of the loans for the vehicles and the process leading to its accusation. Thank the governor of Oslo State for giving us the, these uh, buses to be using in the town. Uh, being that uh, this thing was given to us, we promised that uh, we will use them in good condition. We are very, very happy. Because we are proud of this governor that in the whole nation, this is the only governor uh, who has a knowledge of administration. They have given the way which is easy for us to repay back the money. Alagwada says the microcredit loan and the ease of assessing it is to enhance the economic base of Oshun since it will be easily available to all artisans for any business, no matter how small. The microcredit agency will give you whatever you need, no matter how small, that we, that we use to establish your business. With the buses and the loans coming a few weeks to the election and the second phase due to come, could this be said to be a subtle campaign for the second term bid of Rauf Aregbeshola? Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Oshobo. A handover ceremony took place at the Niger Delta Ministry. The new Minister of State, Stephen Oru, took over from Darius Ishaku with a promise to make a difference in the Niger Delta Development Commission. Ishaku had earlier stated that the ministry has trained about 100 youths in the production of handsets in Calabar. He added that another 100 just returned from Israel, where they were trained in modern agriculture techniques. President Gulag Jonathan has nominated the core marshal of the Federal Road Safety Commission, Osita Chidoka, as minister. The president forwarded Chidoka's name to the Senate for confirmation alongside Dr. Suleiman Abubakar, a lecturer at the University of Abuja. Chidoka is expected to fill the cabinet slot of Anambra State that has been vacant since the exit of former aviation minister Stella Odwa, while Abubakar is to represent Kwara State in the cabinet. Following the death of prominent lawyer Bami Dele Atu, colleagues, friends and human rights activists continue to pay their condolences. They describe late Atu as a man committed to representing the oppressed and marginalized in the society. Ulajima Keolatunji was at his residence. She brought back this report. The Nigerian Bar Association and some human rights groups mourned the death of one of Nigerians' prominent lawyers and human rights activists, Namidili Atsuru. Atsuru studied law at the University of Ife and devoted much of his legal practice to representing the marginalized and oppressed. The late activist was nominated as a member of the ongoing National Confab, but declined the offer, arguing that the conference was designed to achieve nothing. Bamidili Atsuru came to prominence as a fighter against power abusers, when as a member of the National Youth Service Corps, 
He refused to shake the hand of the then military administrator of Niger State, Lawang Guadabe, in 1988, stating that the military had caused great havoc to the democratic aspirations of Nigerians. Many described him as an honest and intelligent lawyer who gave his all for the oppressed. Others say he would be greatly missed for his fighting spirit. It's unfortunate, it has left many of us with heavy hearts. He was a liberator, a freedom fighter. He understood his debt to the society as a legal practitioner. And uh, he did his best. He did what 10 lawyers would not do in, in his own time. I can say about Bamidele is his word is his bond. If he tells you good morning, you know it is good morning. And if he tells you good night, you know it is good night. And if somebody you can be rest assured that if he says he's with you on a matter, you don't have to look back to confirm that Bamdele is with you. If he disagrees with you and he says, please don't count me into this matter to an issue, please do not count me because he will not be there. But if he tells you he will be there on an issue, he will always be there. And very, very hard to swallow. Uh, he's a humanist, a wonderful human being, very, very humble, God-fearing, and I remember he's a comrade. A very good man. That's all I can say. It's everything about him is good. He was selfless, he was uh, frank, he was honest, and he was a good lawyer. Very, very honest advocate for the oppressed, the downtrodden. He meant so many things to so many people. Uh, but I think the totality, the summation of it is that uh, we are dealing or that we have lost a man of great character, great conscience, depth, a man of conviction. The late Aturu died on the 9th of July at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital after a brief illness. Lagos State Governor Babatande Fashila has promised to reconstruct Agri Road in Egon, Igondo Local Council Development Area. Fashila made the promise after inspecting Igondo Lagos Homes Project. Abiola Luwale has details in this report presented from our studios. Fashioner started with the commissioning of a Laurel housing estate, named after the late Olu of Agege of Alative Adams. Afterwards, the governor headed to Igondo local council development area to inspect the 690 units Lagos home scheme. The estate was inherited from the Lagos Building Investment Corporation. Speaking after the inspection, Fashioner says government will give consideration to those who had paid full subscription to the estate. While promising a reconstruction of the road leading to the estate, Fashioner says government will provide palliatives for commuters in the area. The reason we haven't been able to address the road is because uh, we are still moving a lot of contractors coming to site, heavy duty equipment. It's going to damage any road construction we start now. But as the contractors settle in with all their heavy equipment, work on stabilizing the road will start. And ultimately, we will not hand over this estate without rebuilding the access road. The Lagos Homes is an initiative of government to address the housing deficits in Lagos. The watching Core TV Prime Time News will take another break. When we return, it will be time for business and sports news. Stay with us. This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 koba per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. 
Cornwall TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 A 24 hour news station Nigerians continue to Night, the city of Lagos Be the first to know TV news. From the north, south, east, west and around Africa A federal high We coast. break the news We are one Nigerian Now you can catch all the actions live As the news spreads We are Call TV News Welcome to Call TV A 24 hour news station Hello there and welcome to Business News with me, Sabena Izoku. The Central Bank of Nigeria has announced commencement of the biometric registration of bank customers in Lagos. As a result, the bank customers in the state will be issued a unique identification number called the Bank Verification Number. The initiative is part of the financial inclusion policy of the federal government financial sector strategy, which aims to ensure that the nation becomes one of the top 20 largest economies in the world by 2020. The biometric data capture machines has been developed and deployed to about 1,000 bank branches in Lagos. The African uh, Development Bank, AFD, B says it will establish a public-private partnership resource center in Abuja to support government's efforts to reduce infrastructure gap in the country. The African Development Bank private sector specialist Emmanuel Akiwumi gave the disclosure at the fourth national uh, uh, public-private partnership stakeholders forum in Abuja. He said the bank is making effort to support the country in the drive towards improving infrastructure delivery and a more robust and efficient public-private partnership. According to him, the forum will be another avenue to help the bank engage private sector finances into the development projects in the country and bring back cost effectiveness in execution of the projects, speedy service, delivery and maintenance in the system. The Association of Asset Custodians of Nigeria has been talks to seize the opportunity of the ongoing West African Capital Market Integration Initiative to become a financial hub for the new integrated market being created. The Director General of Securities and Exchange Commission, Seik Haruna Ote, who gave this challenge at the Association of Asset Custodian of Nigeria, third annual London Investors Conference held recently in London, also commended the initiative displayed in arranging the Investors Conference and the Association consistency. Ote espoused the many attractions of Nigeria as an investment destination of choice, such as the fact of being Africa's largest economy with a rebased gross domestic product of $510 billion, a consistent gross domestic product growth rate, averaging 7% in the past five years. Delivering the second keynote address at the event, Deputy Governor Sarah Aladi, Economic Policy Directory, CBN, said in her presentation that Nigeria was right for investment. She confirmed the government's commitment to encouraging private sector-led initiatives and those private sector participants and members of the aviation, manufacturing, agriculture industries. Well, uh, Nigeria loses about $2 billion to gas flaring. This was said by the environmentalists and the delegates on the ongoing conference delegation in Minu Basi. The flared gas has a negative impact on the health of people, especially the prevalence of terminal diseases. The health experts say the gas that is being flared in the oil fields impacts on human health as it causes acid rain, cancer, breathing difficulties, skin and other diseases such as bronchitis and asthma. Bassi says the National Conference has made far rich recommendations aimed at protecting Nigeria's environment from danger and added that the conference adopted most of the recommendations of the Environment Committee, which included outlawing gas flaring. 
And on the stock market report, equity transaction on the Nigerian Stock Exchange ended on a bearish note. Capital mark, uh, capital, um, um, capitalization, which opened at 14.212 trillion naira, dropped to close lower at 14.200 trillion naira. The Nigerian Stock Exchange all shares index depreciated by 35.04 points to close lower at 43,004.38 basis points. In all, a total of 310 million shares valued as 3.61 billion naira were exchanged at 5,568 deals. Report shows that 40 oil PLC topped the gainers chart, followed by Guinness PLC, Ashaka Cement PLC, UACN PLC and Transcorp PLC. And on the other hand, Dangote Cement PLC led the gainers chart, led the losers chart, I beg your pardon, followed by the Unilever PLC, Waku PLC, and Nigerian Brewer PLC, and Con Oil PLC. Meanwhile, here are the top five trades. And that's it on business news. Nigerian football denies the misappropriation of funds. That's coming up on Sport News with Brownsville Owen. Stay with us. Very big thanks for joining us on Sport News tonight. I am Brownson Uwana. Thank you very much, Sabina. And of course, I'm straight to the news. The Aminu led executive board of the Nigerian Football Federation has said that all the allegations leveled against it as false, unfounded, and a plan to plot to destroy all the remarkable success recorded by the body. A prominent member of the executive committee board who pleaded a nominee has risen it to strong defense of the Federation in the face of avalanche of financial, financial misappropriation. He denied the allegation that board members partook in the sharing of the Super Eagles Brazil 2014 World Cup largesses of $3.6 million from the Federation's account. The outspoken board member also refuted another allegation that the sum of $90,000 was allegedly missing inside the aircraft conveying the Flying Eagles to a competition last year. He insisted that nothing of such ever happened. And of course, some former FIFA advisor Debo Yonibide has criticized the football governing body for its suspension to the Nigerian Football Federation. FIFA suspension came as it found the Nigerian government culpable in the appointment of an interim, interim board after a court order evicted the previous board that conveyed a Congress in violation of the NFF status. Onik Bingde, however, disclosed that it was high time Nigeria made an important decision on the running of the football. The suspension could affect the country's participation in the qualifying series for the African Youth Championship as well as the African Cup of Nations qualifiers. And away from that to Europe, where FIFA has rejected Uruguay striker Luis Suarez's appeal against a four month ban for all football related activity for biting Sergio Cellini. Suarez was also banned for nine international matches after the incident at the World Cup in Brazil. The Uruguayan FA had described FIFA's ruling as an excessive decision for which there was no enough evidence. Suarez can now make a further appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sports. And of course, away from that to the La Liga, where Atlético Madrid has confirmed the signing of Mar Mario Mandzukic from Bayern Munich for a fee believed to be around 22 million euros. Bayern already announced earlier this week that they had agreed verbal terms with Atletico and Mandzukic has now signed a four-year deal with his new club after passing his medical. Meanwhile, Atletico director Josio Luis Camero 
believe Mandzukic is just the Liga champ is what the Liga champions need in their hunt for more silverware. He scored 25 goals in all competitions last season. And finally on Sport News tonight to the world of golf, Rory McRoy has broken the course record in the first round of the Scottish Open at Royal Aberdeen. The Northern Irish recorded seven Betty in an opening round 64 to establish one shots clubhouse lead. Sweden's Chris Kova Roger kidded a six under pass 65 in first round with Northern Ireland Michael Hoy shots on the back. McRoy, who has not played in the event since 2009, had mixed success in Europe this season with the PGA Championship went what, but then missing court in his home Irish town. And that's a wrap on Sport News tonight. I am Brownson when I gift or get over back with the rest of the news. Stay with us. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Thanks for staying tuned with us. It's Core TV Prime Time News. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said Israel and the Palestinians faced a dangerous moment as violence spiraled in Gaza. Adin, he had urged a ceasefire capable with Israeli self-defense. Kerry said he had been in touch with both Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mohammed Abbas to see whether or not there was some capacity to be able to restore the status quo with respect to a ceasefire. The violence follows the burning to death of a Palestinian teenager by Jewish extremist in apparent revenge for the this kidnap is, uh, and killing of three Israeli youths in the West Bank. Critical uh, moment for the transition, which is essential uh, to the future governance of the country. It's our hope very much that uh, over the course of these next days, uh, very soon, uh, a, a way forward can be found uh, that will uh, provide the foundation for uh, Afghanistan to grab a hold of the future. I've been in touch uh, several times uh, with both candidates as well as with President Karzai. We would encourage both of them to uh, not raise expectations with their supporters, uh, to publicly uh, demonstrate respect for the audit process and the accountability process, and also uh, to uh, show critical statesmanship and leadership at a time when Afghanistan obviously needs it. Indonesian presidential hopeful Joko Widodo urged his supporters to carefully monitor vote counting in a bitterly fought election amid concerns about cheating a day after he and his rival declared victory. Widodo, the first presidential contender without roots in the era of dictator Shuhato, is facing ex-general Subianto in Indonesia's tightest presidential race since the end of authoritarian rule in 1998. Both candidates claim to have won the poll in the world's third biggest democracy based on unofficial tallies. But Widodo seems to be having the backing of more and more credible polling agencies. Official results will not be released until July 22nd due to the complexity of holding elections across the world's biggest archipelago nation. Officials are undertaking the enormous task of counting tens of thousands, tens of millions of votes by hand. Speaking to journalists in the capital, Jakarta, Widodo called on volunteers and party members to monitor and guard the process at polling stations. 
And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. On behalf of the entire production crew, I am Gift Ogeta wishing you a very good night. Rest. Good night.